So we decided to upgrade the railing in our home. Our, our house was built in the 1990s and it has this yellowish oak colored banister and we, as you can see, we already took a lot of it apart. Um, we, we had to get a saw blade and cut through a few nails that were attaching some of these banister pieces and then there's also there were also screws embedded in there with um, wood filler. Um, this one in particular also had some bolts down here that we could loosen. We decided to leave this one in place because we had already got new tile around it here and you can see that the tile goes around the post and so we'd have to pull it out of the tile and I don't want to damage the tile. I could pull it out and I don't really want to patch the tile. We also thought about upgrading these banisters to a different style but we decided that it would be less expensive to paint them and we could still get an impressive upgrade I think with a good high quality paint job without having to replace all the, the wood pieces. So, although if you want to go for another style, you can. There's certainly more modern styles of wood. Uh doesn't come past the your nose here, your bull nose. So if we cut it like that and cut your bull nose, how's that going to look? That's what I was wondering, just cut that little part of the stair. Might look better that way anyway. Yink. And then just have one 45 inch coming up. Yeah. That might work. I think that might look better because if the stair goes through, it's going to look funny, I think. The foot is supposed to be like this sign of stability. Right. Foundation, I guess. All right. So, got the foot built. We had to cut this little bull nose part of the wood off, and we were, did the foot there with some MDF. We built a new square post here. My good friend Chris, who's excellent at working with MDF, helped me make the cuts and help design this um, so he knows what he's doing and this is all kind of new to me but we can tell we had to cut here with like a little wiggle saw and fit it in there we're going to paint and caulk it as well to kind of hide that um, cut that we have there we'll caulk in these little tiny nail holes as well but anyway I think it's going to turn out great it'd be nice to have a new railing and banister and make things look nice Had a before picture, but here's the old yellow oak color banisters we had. We decided just to buy new ones. They were only five dollars a piece, and we only had about twenty-seven, so it's you know maybe two hundred dollars worth of of these. And then we were going to refinish these and sand these off, these railing pieces. But we decided rather than re-sanding, rather than sanding all off off this polyurethane, there's a very thick clear coat of polyurethane on these. And it would have been very difficult to sand in these grooves and get all the polyurethane off because I I did a test where I tried to um, use liquid sandpaper and then try to stain it and it doesn't work. If Even if you use liquid sandpaper to try to remove the polyurethane, the liquid sandpaper is good if you're gonna paint on top, but if you're gonna actually stain the wood, you have to sand off all the polyurethane. So I, I found that it didn't work at all to use liquid sandpaper. You have to use actual physical sandpaper to remove any polyurethane that's there. And with these deep grooves, in this in this railing, we decided it wasn't going to work very well. Uh, it'd take a lot of work to sand off all those deep grooves and get it get the uh, sand the stain to soak in well, and then polyurethane it again. So what we did is we went to the restore, and at the restore they had um, the restore had really long pieces of this, which is just pre-sanded. It's a little it's slightly dirty in a few spots. You can see little dirt marks here and a few stains. But it was there was no polyurethane on 
on these uh, railing banister pieces that I got at the restore, and there's two 10 foot long pieces, and all I needed was 20 feet, so perfect. I've, and it was actually really inexpensive. This is oak, and it was only $10 for, for 10 feet, so it was a dollar per foot. Dollar per foot, so I paid $20 for 20 feet worth of railing at the restore, the Habitat for Humanity restore. These, you know, would have been four times more expensive to buy oak railing at Home Depot, and so to get this oak railing that was already pre sanded and didn't have any polyurethane on it was a, a huge time saver. It did take some time to kind of rebuild the the railing and screw the right and drill the right holes into it. As you can see here, I had this one, this old one had holes drilled into it, so I had to do the same thing with the new one. So drilling the holes took some time, and that was you know kind of a pain, but better than having to sand off everything because we didn't have to sand these at all. We're just going to sell these or give them back to the restore, these other ones, and donate them. Um, but these these ones that we got at the restore for only a dollar per foot for oak is was a pretty good deal. We just we did sand it down again. We got a really fine. We went from I think maybe we started with 80 or 100 grit sandpaper, sanded it down with 100 grit, and then it went up to 150 grit sandpaper with the sanding electric sander and we sanded it down really well and then after sanding it we cleaned it um, with uh, liquid TSP and then after cleaning it and letting it dry then we did the uh, the stain and we're letting the stain dry then after the stain we're gonna put the polyurethane on so so anyway I think you know saves saved us a lot of time to get some some new railing from the restore that was didn't have any polyurethane on it we did have to do a little bit of sanding and cleaning to get some of those little stains off of it but it was nice to save us so we didn't have to sand off any of the polyurethane so we're still working on the banister project and the railing and we've got the railing stained a dark brown color we chose the color Kona from Home Depot which we we liked that color especially like how this one turned out it looks beautiful it just brings out the the nice wood with that dark that beautiful dark brown Kona color it's looking very nice especially on this piece it's just this is just a nice piece of wood this one turned out very very nice looking and uh, with stain, you just paint it on and you wipe off. You wipe it off. You don't paint it on like paint. You do paint it on like paint at first, but then you have to wipe it off so that the stain doesn't accumulate. If you leave too much stain on there, it just looks like dark brown paint. But if you wipe it off, it brings out the the beautiful, you know, knots and parts of the wood that you can see there in this in this video. And so, like I said, we got some um, some stain from Home Depot, and we chose the the Kona color. So. We got this Verithane wood stain. Uh, it's his Kona. This is the color. It's a dark brown. You can see it's. I think I like that dark brown color. It's gonna look nice in contrast with our white uh, railing banister pieces. So, so we've got that all stained here, and then we're waiting for it to dry. It says you're supposed to wait 72 hours or three days before you paint a clear coat on it. So we're waiting for these last two pieces to dry, and then we'll do a polyurethane clear coat on that after. So we decided to go with these um, square. Uh, banisters uh, to replace the old ones that we've had and bring out a nice look with the contrast of the, the bright white and the dark brown. I think will look very nice.